Welcome back to Guild Wars 2. It's been a long time since I've made a Guild Wars video, after Winter's Day pissed me off so much, but I really loved what they did with Halloween last year. A lot. You might have noticed it from my channel's banner. Eh, anyway. So let's see what they have for us this year. I honestly expected them to just reuse the story and content from the Shadow of the Mad King, but they actually pulled out something different and gave us blood and madness. To be honest though, I wish they had just done Shadow of the Mad King again. I feel like the scavenger hunt for the Mad Memoirs was much more entertaining than what they decided to do this year. So let's take a look into why I feel that is the case. To start off Blood and Madness, you receive a letter from Magister Tassie, the Asurin from the Dermond Priory who helped us last year. She is looking for adventurers to aid her with a mysterious artifact from the Mad King's reign at the Nolani Academy ruins outside the Black Citadel. So after you head to the Nolani Academy, you find Tassie standing next to an odd box that she believes something terrifying is about to be released from. And she's almost right. I am not King Oswald Thor. I am the cure of flesh. I am the spiller of blood. I am Prince Edric Thorn, and I come for my father. Unfortunately, it is not His Majesty Oswald Thorn, the Mad King, who appears from the box, but his whiny little son, Edric Thorn, the Bloody Prince. It turns out that Edric was locked in the box by his father and written out of history. Now he intends to return to the Mad Realm to seek his revenge. Upon hearing that the people of Tyria spend Halloween adoring his father, he becomes angered and tries to kill you. After the battle begins, you'll notice that you can't hurt the Bloody Prince with your weapons. It turns out he only has one weakness. Candy Corn. This is where the disappointment starts to set in. So after tossing enough candy corn at Edric, he decides to back off and return to the Mad Realm to destroy his father and deal with you later. To put him back in his box for good, Tassie will need some supplies for her containment field and gives you a relay golem to stay in contact with you and keep you up to date with what's going on. This thing is useless. The first time you use it, she tells you you'll need a living candy corn elementals to stop the bloody prince. She also sends you a letter telling you the same thing. You can only use the golem three more times to hear some dialogue about the conflict that's going on in the Mad Realm, and that's it. It becomes a useless paperweight after that. So how do we get this candy corn elemental? Do we go on a quest in various areas of Tyria to collect supplies to create this living candy corn? No. Do you use your ability as the Mad King's emissary to summon a candy corn servant? Try again. To get the can elemental, all you do is complete challenges outside and inside the Mad Realm. Basically, go do achievements. And there's only one that's actually a challenge. Really, all you have to do is go to the Mad Realm and run around in a Zerg, bashing in all the faces of the Labyrinthine Horror, the Skeletal Lich, and the Grand High Viscount of Candy Corn. Then you open 50 Trick or Treat bags, and shut 50 Haunted Doors, then you run into a wee problem. You're out of achievements to do! To finish off the meta achievement, A Sweet Friend, you'll have to do the daily achievements, which aren't anything terribly noteworthy, except for one of them. Last year, the Mad King's Clock Tower Jumping Puzzle, my personal favorite in the game, was completely optional. It had nothing to do with the meta achievement that year, and for good reason. It's hard as hell for most people to complete! I spent two hours last year before I got it up the first time. A lot of people just gave up on it. Now this shouldn't be a problem, unless you wait towards the end of Halloween to start. If you're bad at jumping puzzles, and it's the last achievement you need on the final day, well, tough luck, I guess? With that little annoyance out of the way, you should have completed A Sweet Friend and have become the proud owner of a mini candy corn elemental. All that's left to do is return to Tassie at the Nolani Academy for the final showdown with the Bloody Prince. So, you return to her, summon the Bloody Brat, bash his face in as well, then you're done. Congrats, GG, piss off now. So what is your reward for all of this? While it's not as visually impressive as the Flaming Mad Memoirs collection from last year, the gift of candy corn is very useful. 
puts a candy corn node in your character's home that can be mined once a day. It essentially lets you get a candy corn for some of the recipes that you could only make during Halloween otherwise. And aside from all that, there isn't much else to say content-wise. Obviously the clock tower makes its return from last year. The Lunatic Inquisition is also back. They thankfully got rid of that annoying MOBA game, and two new costumes were added to the gem shop next to the previous ones. I will say that I am pretty pissed off that the dead stop shield can only be attained from Black Lion chests. It looks awesome and even has a great inscription that reads, Dedicated to those clumsy oafs who tumbled off my tower last Halloween. Thanks to you, I have a delightful and colorful corpse pile to gaze upon. It just seems to me like it would be a cool reward for people who actually complete this clock tower, especially if they did it, you know, many, 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 many times. So really, I guess my final thoughts are that while it isn't a terrible event, I do think that Blood Madness just didn't live up to what we were given last year. But at least it wasn't uh, tedious and repetitive like uh, the Winter's Day stuff was, doing the same instance over and over and over again with very little changes. It's nice that, you know, it's short, but you get it done in one go with uh, no waiting. I mean, it's not a bad event, but I just personally would have preferred it to be more like it was before. So, with all that being said, I hope you all have a fantastic Halloween, and I suppose I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.